Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to Spoon CCW Live Show. Um, I forgot the class schedule. I got it. We're live on Facebook. Yeah, let's. <clears throat> so, class schedule. Um, 8.29, one spot. Um, 9.6. Four spots, 920, full open class. Um, hopefully this has gone live on everything. So uh, should be should be going. Let me refresh the page here. Make sure that we are live on Facebook. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we're live. All right. So we're live. We see comments and such. All right. Technical garbage out of the way. 829, one spot. 96, four spots. Uh, 920, open class. Defensive pistol, two days. Going to be 912 and 13. Uh, four spots are left. 8.30 pistol instructor workshop. Got a couple left for that. Um, so that's going to be 8.29 and 30. You got to do basic pistol and pistol instructor. So we got some spots left for that. 10.3 and 10.4 is going to be basic rifle and carbine and then uh, rifle instructor. So if you want to get your rifle instructor rating, then uh, 10.3 and 4. Um, I think that's what we got for the schedule at the moment. We'll call it out that far. Um, let me give your book back to you. What do we got for you tonight? Uh, a new presidential uh, VP pick. Um, <laughs> a bunch of news. Um, yeah, that was that was the <coughs> story of the day. Oh yeah, that was a it was a great story. Um. What do we got? Uh, you got a range and carry tip. I do. Uh, have someone video you at the range. Yeah, um, works good. Being able to see what you're doing right and wrong help work out bad habits, timing, and uh, shooting fundamentals issues. Um, if you can actually see what you're doing, wrong, right or wrong, when you get home and, and critique it. So, you know, we, we do that quite a lot, see what people do, what right, what they do wrong, et cetera, et cetera. You know, when we're standing be, beside somebody, it's a lot easier to see what they're doing wrong than it is to try to feel how what you're doing wrong or right when you're doing it. So yeah, that, that slow can, motion video yeah. on the, on sure. your new cell phones works really well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, heck, so, I even used that when I was having mm -hmm. troubles with my 350 Legend slow motion video. So it yeah. wasn't. Right. Wasn't sure how bad it was short cycling. Yeah, so. exactly. So, you know, it's something to think about. You know, you just have to take somebody to range with you and um, just use your phone, take take a video of it, you know. Yeah. And uh, just, you know, and make, you know, you can even do it um, dry fire. If you're doing dry fire practice with the uh, case on the, on the muzzle of the gun and, and the trigger pull, see if that falls off and stuff, you know. And you can do a lot of stuff with, with a video. It'll tell you a lot of things that you didn't know. Yeah. It yeah. Will. So. And, it, you know, and, you might, and you might as well take advantage of that. You know, you've got that technology in your pocket. Right. You're carrying it around on a, on a daily basis. So. Exactly. You might as well use it. Especially, and, if, especially if you're having troubles. There's something you can't figure out. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know, it's hard to know, you know, if it's just one little thing that's throwing off your aim, then you're not going to see it. When you're actually shooting, yeah. So, well, and a lot of people can't see can't see the grip squeeze for a heel or right. um, dropping the front sight or something like that. Exactly. Uh, I mean, how many times you see where somebody drops the front sight, but 
at the same time, they also close their eyes and, and nod their head. So mm -hmm. that yeah. kind of goes along with that. And yep. they're not going to see that when. No. And when they're, you know, taking the shot and raising their head and looking at the target, you know. Yeah. And we see that all the time, too, you know. And, oh, no, I wasn't. Yeah, you were. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, you were. Yep. So you, video evidence can't be disputed. Yeah. You can't exactly. say, no, nah, I wasn't doing that. Yeah. yeah we'll yeah, show you what you were not doing properly. I'll tell you that. Yep. You got it. And a carry trip. Training your mind. Um, you can do scenario training in the Walmart parking lot. It doesn't matter whether there's a threat there or not or whether you're carrying a gun or not. And uh, just imagine what your scenario would be, what you would do in a particular situation and, and run that through your mind and um, you know, have a backup plan and another backup plan and stuff just in case, you know, you just, you know, the big thing about it is to ask yourself the question, what would I do if this happened? Certainly. And just keep that run through your mind and, uh, you know, do it while you're, you know, kind of in threat level white, so you can think about it. And because once you get to threat level orange or red, there's no think, no no more thinking. Yeah, That's, you know, you're just doing. Right. So if you have a plan beforehand, then you can fall back on that plan. So, Certainly. I mean, I don't know, I don't know how many times you walk into a restaurant or something like that. You're looking for the exits and. Yeah. You know, looking for the bathroom and it doesn't have to be, you know, some kind of negative attack or something like that. No. I the power could go out and the lights go out. And yeah. then if you didn't bother to see where the door was at, how are you gonna get out of there? You know? Right. Especially exactly. if you ain't carrying your flashlight like you're supposed to. Yeah. Um you know, something happens and you know, I don't know, the kid gets sick and you gotta run him to the bathroom. Well, if it's the bad. kid's getting sick, you know, you don't want to be yeah. traipsing all over the restaurant with a yeah, running, running around bathroom. trying to find a bathroom. So there's a lot of there's a lot of things that go into that and you just yeah. you gotta plan your day to day life. You just can't kinda of go through a helter skelter and not Yeah, exactly deal with that kind of stuff. And you know, personally I like to sit my back to the wall. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, that, I'm just crazy about that. I, I do have to say, I, I understand why people don't like these chairs. They suck. <laughs> yeah. That's they, they definitely keep the, you awake well, in class. Well, the time we want because they don't fall asleep. So. Is it, you'd fall out of the damn thing. This chair sucks. <laughs> anyway, uh, you can do this with or without a partner, um, by yourself, with somebody else. You know, have somebody critique it and see what they say about it, you know, and, and you can critique theirs and whatever, you know, make it fun. Make it fun. Bounce it back and forth. Sure. You know, but, and you can do it pretty much anywhere. Yeah, you can do it anywhere. Yeah. And if you have a partner with you, you know, if it's, you know, your spouse or whatever, you know, talk, you know, if, when you're wandering through the Walmart park, you know, talk about it. Talk out loud. First off, you're going to gain you know, that value, you know, communication skill of being able to you know, communicate while you're doing something, but they're going to kind of know what your plan is. They're going to know what their part of the plan is. And you, right. you, know, you develop stuff like that, you know, together. So that each, you know, each of you knows what, what's going on and what to do. And, yeah. you know, if said happens. Yeah. If said happens. And, um, and then the second person, of course, doesn't want to do something wrong and end up in the line of fire. Right. Yeah. Well, the big variable in there is kids. Yeah. You know, there's yeah. kids everywhere. Every family's got kids. You might, yeah. grandkids and nieces, nephews, what I can't tell you how many times yeah. I've been out with kids. And yeah. when they get a little older, they start understanding. But if they're younger and you're in a pair, you know, mm -hmm. with your, like your kids might be your neighbor's kids. It doesn't matter. But somebody's got to deal with those kids they're not going to automatically know what they need to do yeah, yeah. so yeah exactly you know that's that's something that's got to be you know kind of hash out and uh, the other thing that i see a, a ton is especially at grocery stores this seems to be the worst at grocery stores people will come out and they will be literally two armfuls of bags 
and they'll have their keys in their hand and they'll hit that unlock button they're 30 feet from the car and the trunk pops open right and they're leaning over not paying attention to what's going on so mm -hmm. there's all kinds of these stuff in it your scenario you can you know use other people's mistakes yeah. in your scenario for sure. that kind of planning yep so that works pretty good um you know right along that note we got this uh this video we want we always try and bring up <clears throat> this is uh i found this and i can't say this dude's name um on i found it on police activities facebook page and uh Roy's hammering on this time and distance thing and, and how people can cover a lot more distance than you can, you know, imagine before you can get your, your gun out and draw and effectively engage that particular target. And uh, the, the title on this video that I saw was uh, Physical Fitness Matters. Now, in the concealed carry civilian world, there, there's a ton of physical limitations that you have to deal with and you know we're not saying you, you should be able to run a half a mile full speed but what it what this shows us is how effective distance can be from somebody who's overly determined and this is uh starts to be humorous until you realize it's serious uh, 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 can you just have a seat for me step back you're gonna get tased bro step back you're going to get tased. And Facebook winds her up again. Uh, uh, can you just have a seat for me? There we go. Step back. You're going to get tased, bro. Step back. You're going to get tased. Step you back. see how much distance this guy's covering? Step back. You will get stuck. Everybody hear that? One, two, three, four, five shots. Yeah. Coming around the corner. Mm -hmm. And this dude is still coming at him. He's still coming at him. We don't know if we hit him. We don't know if he missed him. But look at the amount of distance he covers. He's being tased. Probably the taser was ineffective. And then charges the officer again, covers that distance. He's got a switch. Get to his pistol, fires five shots. And this dude is still coming at him. Six. Shot fired. Shot fired. Now the dude goes down. But it's all the way back here. Let's let's time that, right? Let's see if I can pause it. Step back. You will get shot. So it looks mm -hmm. like 14 from 14 seconds in the video. Fire, shots fired. 21. To 21 or 22 seconds before the guy goes down. Six seconds. And he covers from the What's middle it? of the road all the way around back to the middle of the road. Road lanes are what, 15 feet wide about? About that. Plus a little bit of the sidewalk. So the guy covered... Well, we don't know the distance, like so we don't have yards, a, maybe something like Well, that. I'm gonna I'm yeah. gonna say at least forty feet to fifty feet. Forty to fifty yeah. forty oh, to fifty yeah. feet. While he was being actively shot by an officer. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know I we chose I chose this video because it just it highlights how important distance is and how important creating distance is so that you have time to react to the situation. I mean, that, that this officer was running away from this guy, and I, he had to have had some kind of weapon or something, you know, tased him and then then ended up shooting him. But like I, at least at least forty to fifty feet, this guy covered while being shot after being tased. So, mm -hmm. you know, well, that also highlights the importance of training and shot placement. Shot placement, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, I mean, the officer's going one-handed, kind of halfway behind him, and uh, we don't, like I said, we, we don't know how many shots he landed. I have no idea. But the, the distance between the officer and the attacker wasn't that great. Mm -hmm. So I'm imagining he probably landed a great majority of those shots. 
Yeah. And the guy goes down after the sixth shot. So whether or not he got lucky on the sixth one or he landed the other ones and hit and hit the sixth one and then, you know, the guy just finally ran gave up the gas. fight, ran out of gas and went down, we don't know. But in a civilian situation, if we look at the surrounding neighborhood in that particular video, I mean, you can see there's a car here. There's going to be innocents in that surrounding area. There's another car down here. That's not an objectionable distance if you no. miss to hit no. that car with somebody in it. Yeah, so, exactly. I mean, you, you have to – it's imperative that you create time and distance. It's also imperative that you put – all of your required shots on that target so that they stop in that intended target. Yeah. So that was an old saying. He said, you might hurt them. You might hurt them right now, but that doesn't mean they're going to go down. They might be hurt, but they might be dead. It doesn't mean they're going to be dead right now. Yeah. Yeah. They might be dead, but they, they're not going to be dead right now. It, it takes yeah. a minute. All literally almost a minute. Yeah. I mean, so in this particular scenario, it's a, what, six seconds? Eight seconds. Eight seconds. Eight seconds is a lot of time. Time it on your watch. I mean, you do a lot of damage in eight seconds. If that guy had a knife or something like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, a, that's a pretty bad outcome. So, I mean, I guess we can't, we can't pound on this time and distance thing enough. Um, if you attend one of our more advanced classes, you're going to, you're going to be so sick of me saying time and distance that uh, you're probably not going to want to hear it again. But, uh, I mean, right there it is. That's why you need it. Shot placement, accuracy. I mean, we're always banging on everybody about accuracy, accuracy, accuracy. You, can't, you cannot miss fast enough to win that. You just can't do it. And, and this shows us right here yeah. why. I mean, if he'd, have, if he'd have missed the majority of those shots – Probably wouldn't have been. It wouldn't have been. There. Yeah, you wouldn't. Have. Yeah. So, <clears throat> time and distance, accuracy, work on those two things. Train, 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 train some more. Move, move. Get off the X. I yeah. mean, this is this is pulling all of this stuff in in this one video. Get off the X. Uh, shoot in goofball positions, laying down and behind yeah. you, and up and down sideways and. And if Around you see, stuff. like that officer, like, you know, me, you know, he got off the X and he just, you know, he kept going. Yeah, he kept moving, just, kept moving, you know, kept moving. Yeah. The, the other thing is, a lot thing, of people think, like, get off the X, like, okay, I'm going to, I'll move, you know, my body with, that. my body with this way. Well, that's, you know, double that, triple yeah. that, quadruple keep, keep that. Going. Keep yeah. going. Keep going. Set three or four targets up and keep moving. Yeah. Um, yeah, you, know, you can find out how how hard it is to shoot on the move yeah. when you're actually walking and shooting. Or or half running. Or half running. Yeah. You know, the other thing that I really didn't bring up that this um, highlights heavily is expiring cover. I mean, this guy had no cover really other than his right. his patrol car that was there. Yeah. But if we imagine that there was something in the way that he would have kept going, so you the first piece of cover that you find is – may or may not be the best one. It might be the second or third one that you find that yeah. is going to be what works. You know, I, I mean, how many, they went around that circle three times. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. uh, he didn't have no cover, but thankfully the other dude didn't have a gun. Well, and, you know, his cover consumant, his cruiser, you know, with the avenue of approach from that guy, it expired as soon as he got out of the car. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was done. That, the best piece over. of cover he had on that block was yeah. over as the, soon as he got out of that The only car. thing I can say about this this officer, as the, as the, you know, the officer's here and the, the suspect's approaching here, he should have went around the backside of the cruiser to, to cause him to go and use that cruiser as a, as a barrier. Yeah, um, and it would have changed, it, changed his trip. You know that guy was was coming this way. He would have had to have changed, yeah. completely changed his trajectory. Which, that and that goes right back into, you know, don't fight your attackers. Fight. I mean, do something to change that whole situation to your planning stage, and then you're not fighting his fight. So I mean, yeah. 
it, it, this, this one little get board, out of the ambush, set up a counter ambush. Yeah, get out of the ambush, set up a counter ambush, and and then do it your way, not their way. Yep. On to news. I thought that headline was pretty interesting. Um, this is from the Missoulian. Dot com it is an opinion piece. Um, this I and I didn't fact check this claim. President Trump claimed the election will determine the future of private gun ownership in the United States. Um, I don't. I mean, it doesn't matter whether this is true or not. Whether he said it, I kind of think the same way. I mean, uh, Joe Biden has said a long running history of. Ban, 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 ban this, ban that, when, ban this, and and after uh, what, what was that goofball from Texas that said I'm taking your gun? Oh, Beto, Beto. Yeah, he said he would, he said flat out that if, if I get the nomination, I'm going to make Beto my my gun guy. Yeah, and make the gun take it. Gun, well, the guy takes the guns away. but the thing is, I mean, Kamala Harris was a, a prosecutor in California, and we kind of know that record. So, well, she's, and she's already said she said on the campaign trail that um, if she got elected president, or within the first hundred days, she was, executive order, they, Congress didn't do it. She was going to do it herself. Yeah, under Which, executive order. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm getting gonna tired of this. My and, rights. Executive my order. Constitutional rights with an executive order. I think yeah. that'll fly like a lead balloon. But yeah, yeah I mean, I just, I'm getting tired of this executive order garbage. Um, so apparently the uh, writer of this article agrees with him. Um, the in Montana voters' choice for U.S. Senate looks to determine its balance of power. If they gain control, Joe Biden. Senate Democrats promise to eliminate the filibuster, allowing them to pass any legislation they want with a simple majority vote, which is a bad idea. I mean, um, the Senate won't just determine what gun control legislation gets passed. It'll also determine what judges get confirmed because they could veto with a simple majority. They wouldn't have to have a filibuster vote to do that, which means it would sway the entire judicial system one direction or the other for years to come. And that was one thing, uh, if you talked to us before the election, why we said that we we did not want uh, a Democratic nomination or presidency because of the number of justices that were retiring, the number of justices that needed appointed to the bench, the number of Supreme Court justices that needed appointed to the bench, and that it would sway gun rights to the negative for 30 plus years, possibly. Yeah. Generations. Um, so I kind of okay. agree with them. The, uh, and, and he goes on to say that there are a few issues that divide Democrat and Republican appointed judges more consistently and completely than gun control. President Trump's 2,200 federal judicial confirmations have only just brought the courts into balance with Democrat appointees still controlling circuit courts for 24 states plus D.C. So, um, you know, now we're, we're at a balanced situation. We're not in a, in a positive light as far as the courts are concerned. Um, states Democrats control judicially are ones that they also tend to control legislatively. These circuit courts approve any and all of the regulations they get passed, no matter how flagrantly they infringe on the right to keep and bear arms. We've seen this with New York and California, Connecticut, yeah, yeah. New Jersey, Massachusetts, although we're going to see a, a punch in the face here to California here shortly. Don't expect the Supreme Court to restrain these courts. All four Democrat appointments claim people don't have the right to self-defense, and indeed they have already noted they will vote to overturn the court's 2008 Heller and 2010 McDonald decisions. Those rulings merely ensure the government could not completely ban firearms. And if you're not educated on the, the Heller and McDonald decisions um, that happened in the Supreme Court, you absolutely need to go and read up on those two decisions um, because they mm -hmm. affirm that the, the American people have the right to keep and bear arms, not just keep them at home. So um, 
it, it's it's a wise idea to educate yourself on those. And you know, if if you want to go to this article and and hit the link that's in this article, the every article that we put up, the the links to the articles we use are abs, are in the description. So you can absolutely go there and check this stuff out for yourself. So um, you know. can't stress this enough we brought it up again everybody you know all you guys watching everybody out there you know you need to get out and vote and absolutely and then don't don't just stop at that you know write your you know fire your email up fire your you know your typewriter up um i've actually gotten pretty good response from actually like sending like written letters to yeah. to um, our reps to congressmen senators you know the, well, the whole nine yards, you know, somebody, they kind of, seems like they tend to, if you actually send them instead of just an email or electronic message, you send them something stamped in paper. They're like, wow, this guy's pretty serious. Yeah. Yeah. You paid for it to get there. So, mm -hmm. um, the other thing is that, that I want to stress enough is everybody concerns themselves so much with federal, um, elections a president and the senate and congress and stuff like that and we, we can't stress it enough that elections matter right down to your school board i mean yeah the sure. the infringements on on rights happen far more from townships and counties and states than they do from the federal government the vast majority of the times and and those elections are the ones that will sway the federal elections if if your county reps say, no, we're not going to do this, your state reps say, no, we're not going to do this, then that's going to sway the federal government because they get pushback from the states. Mm -hmm. So it is really, really, really important that you choose the proper candidates that have your mindset and the goals that you want to set out for your community and put them in the jobs and hold them accountable for those jobs. Yeah. Well, you, you know, you brought that up, um, you know, like you said, you know, you need to get involved in your local politics. And it was a, it was, I think it was last week. It was a daily wire article. If you go, you know, if you watch any of his stuff, you know, Ben Shapiro, he had one, it was a bunch of screenshots from a, it was a group of teachers that were complaining that the online schooling was going to be a problem because parents were going to be home and they weren't going to be able to, essentially pass their rhetoric on to the kids because mm -hmm. the parents will be able to see it, hear it, and listen uh, and yeah. go, no, I don't Wait think so. Minute. No, yeah. we're all done here, buddy. Yeah. And well, but then you got crap. Like, uh, somebody told me there was, there was some newsletters coming out from some of the schools that kids couldn't wear pajamas while they were at online school. And then we got this one kid that, um, and I don't know, where he was at but he had a bb gun hanging on the wall of his bedroom and and uh the school decided that they were going to call child protective services because he had a bb gun hanging on us because they seen it through the thing and said it was a violation of of you know essentially bringing a gun to school but it was at home with a zoom meeting so yeah. some of these people are just beyond ridiculous when it comes to this kind of stuff well so. there was i saw one earlier it was a this one corporation is requiring the people on their corporate zoom meetings to wear a mask on the zoom meeting did you see the one where what you wear <laughs> a mask on a zoom meeting yeah because you're gonna get coronavirus through the internet I, when me, we were talking about it and uh i was like you know there's been multiple times where i was like you know if i could just come through this phone right now like, <laughs> i'm probably going i might be I, go, I might be going to jail but you know that just can't happen like stuff can't physically go through the phone or the internet line <laughs> i'd be in serious trouble if this stuff could go through you know the like phone. if i could just like matrix my way through this telephone then <laughs> yeah i'd be in serious trouble i saw something i wouldn't have cable not, either <laughs> not necessarily on the same line but i saw something on on the internet this morning where they for some reason, the nuclear, the guys that head of CC, CEOs or whatever they call the guys that run the nuclear plants in this one company, they made them take white privilege training to adjust 
how they ran the plant so they were more receptive to minorities. What? <laughs> What's that got to do with nuclear power? Yeah, exactly. Okay, what? An obvious violation of your constitutional rights. Anyway. Right. So, on this note, um, four Republican justices clearly care about the right to self defense. They won't take up the gun control cases because they fear Justice John Roberts will side with the liberal justices, which he has done in the past. Uh, and in Montana, two senators are sharply divided who should be on the courts. John Tester voted for Supreme Court Justices Ellen Keegan and Sanya Sotomayor, who are probably a couple of the most liberal judges that are on there, right? Um he opposed Brett Kavanaugh and Neil Gorsuch, who support the right, which are probably a couple of the more conservative justices that are on there. So, you know, the thing is, if Governor Steen Bullock replaces Danes in November and gives Democrats control of the Senate, it means more judges in the vein of Sotomayor and Kagan. So this is how local elections, state elections, directly affect the way that the laws go in the states. I mean... There is challenges to laws every day that go to the Supreme Court, and they they don't take them up. But for something like this, we have a huge split in the country, and, and essentially what is going on, the reason that the court denied the last case was a New York Rifle and Pistol Association against New York City was because they were worried that they didn't have the votes to make it go their way. So they decided to call the case moot and leave it back to the lower courts to decide if we get another liberal justice that is appointed or one of these justices leaves and we replace him with a liberal justice, we're stuck in the same boat. If we could get a conservative self-defense liking judge on the, on the, the bench, then a lot of this stuff would move forward and we would be in much better shape. So, it matters. <clears throat> in that arena, new riots and looting trash downtown Chicago. And what's that? What's that lady's name down there? Uh, Lori, Lori Lightfoot. Lightfoot. And, and now she's now she's con condemning the riots. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. She was earlier in the, earlier in the week, but they were. They went into a. She looks like Beetlejuice. Yeah, but they were they were rioting in a. I mean, there was videos of like a U-Haul like clearing out a Gucci store. I mean, hundreds of people smashed windows, stole from stores, and clashed with police early Monday in Chicago's magnificent Mile Shopping District and other parts of the city's downtown. What are they rioting over? I don't like what happened. What? I, did I miss something? Shots were fired at police, and officers returned fire. Police spokesman Tom. Ahern said on Twitter, no officers oh, yeah. were injured. There was a, it was a shooting in Inglewood. Oh, there was a shooting in Inglewood? Yeah, so, the officer wounded a guy that uh, was, shooting at them. Shoot, was shooting at him. Oh, wait. It, so we go riot? The dude's shooting at me. Like, I'm not supposed to shoot back no more? No, apparently. apparently. That's retarded. So, um, oh, I just went by it. That's why. So it wasn't immediately clear what led to the unrest, which began shortly after midnight, but any police graffiti was seen in the area. Hours early, dozens of people have faced off with police after officers shot and wounded a person Sunday in the city's Englewood neighborhood. Okay, so there you go. Um, I, I mean, there's a real easy way to avoid that. Don't shoot at the police. Yeah. I mean, unless they're like, you know, I completely have lost all of their collective minds or on the wrong side of the law. It's probably generally a bad idea to shoot at the cops anyway. You might need them tomorrow. Yeah. There'll be a dude robbing you. Holy crap, that place is trashed. Yeah. Along the Magnificent Mile, people were seen going in and out of stores carrying shopping bags full of merchandise as well as <laughs> at a bank, the Chicago Tribune reported. And as the crowd grew, vehicles dropped off more people in the area. So they brought people into – this is retarded. One officer was seen slumped against a building. Several arrests were made, and a rock was thrown at the police vehicle. Newspaper said police worked early Monday to disperse the crowds. Um, 
In the earlier shooting in Englewood, police said in a statement that they responded about 2.30 p.m. Sunday to a call by a person with a gun and tried to confront someone, matching his description, in an alley. He fled from officers on foot and shot at officers, police said. So we're going to riot over this? Mm -hmm. I mean, Walgreens didn't sell him the bullets. This makes no zero sense whatsoever. None. Well, and then, I mean, we're going to rob and loot a, a Walgreens. And, you know, probably you know, a Best Buy and a Lowe's and a bank and everything. Yeah, well, it was, it was, well, it was a, it was a mall with, on that Magnificent yeah. Mile. There was a mall that had a bunch of like really hot, like a Coach store and a Gucci store and like yeah. stuff like that. Oh, yeah, because the Gucci purse is. Yeah. Well, the funny thing is, I mean, like all them, all that high end stuff is all serial numbers. And the yeah. serial numbers are recorded when they're sold, when they're, it's, it's like, it's damn near like transferring a gun and they, they have so much control over them. So really? The first time somebody gets picked up with one. Oh, that's stolen. Uh, you in possession of a $3,000 stolen, stolen purse. Huh. Yeah, Felony. That's, yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's grand theft, isn't it? Yeah. But I mean, people in that neighborhood, well, I mean, I'm sure they need the Walgreens to go get, you know, prescriptions yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. So, and it's I, just, you're just sorry. hurting yourself. Um, related to that, I saw where um, the Black Lives Matter protesters said that uh, they looted the stores, be, the stores um, that was reparations. Okay, whatever. It's getting beyond <laughs> it's my... Getting beyond... It, it's beyond my cognitive ability, apparently, here. Yeah, that's like so, reparations. Oh, next thing we got coming up is in Ohio... Gun control group launch a campaign to stop a stand your ground bill. Um, stand your ground bill would be a phenomenal thing for the state of Ohio. Um, there's a few misnomers about stand your ground, but we won't get into that right now. Um, and I think I would bet this has got something to do with a lady, and this is going to be a blast from the past. Toby Hoover. I think I think this is going to be. Um, Something with this coalition of eight groups advocating for more gun control launched an online petition to stop stand your ground. Yep, Toby Hoover, founder of the Ohio Coalition Against Gun Violence. This lady has been at this since 2003 when the first concealed carry law got passed. She literally was on record saying it was going to be the Wild West, there was going to be blood in the streets. Guess what, Toby? It didn't happen here. It's happening out in Portland and, and yeah. Chicago where the gun control is retarded. And you're wrong. Go back to your hole somewhere. Uh, yeah. Says she's afraid Republican lawmakers will pick up the contentious gun bill during the lame duck session, the period of time between November election and the end of the legislative year. They do a lot of things during that month to six weeks, and it seems like they do it with abandon. We were said, like, okay, let's push all these things through because then we'll start a new year and everybody will forget about it. The Republican-sponsored bill would remove the requirement for gun owners to retreat before using deadly force in self-defense. However, critics say similar laws around the country have resulted in increased gun deaths, especially among African Americans who and don't deter crime, which is dead wrong because – African Americans are the ones who actually benefit because they are have a higher percentage of population in the the low income neighborhoods, which have a higher population of crime, which means they then would not have to retreat from their attacker before using force in defense of themselves. So it's not about you get to walk up and shoot somebody because you don't like them. It's about if your life is in danger, you don't have to try and run away first or get out of the situation, which makes honest people's lives phenomenally easier, especially when it comes to overzealous prosecutors and civil suits and different things yeah, like that. Exactly. Uh, the petition, which has got over 3,100 3, signatures so far, which is ridiculous. What's there, four and a half million people in this state? Seven and a half million? Yeah. So, I don't know. Eight, and three and a half. I don't know. Eight and a half. Is it eight and a half? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so you got thirty-one hundred. I bet. I bet there's more than that in signatures for uh, stand your ground bill. Yeah, I would bet. These laws embolden reckless gun owners to shoot first and ask questions later. No, they don't. No. Then claim self-defense to avoid being held responsible for killing another individual. No, wrong. 
that can be used to protect white vigilantism and justify yeah. violence against people of color. There we go. Let's we yeah. whip the race, race card, card out. out. Yep. It can be used to protect. Yeah. Um, it cites the killings of Ahmaud Arbery in Georgia and Trayvon Martin in Florida as examples. Ahmaud Arbery doesn't have anything to do with Stand Your Ground. Nothing. He was pursued by three numbnuts who had no reason to pursue him to begin with. Yeah. yeah. Ahmaud Arbery was actually the benefiter of Stand Your Ground had he been able to use something in defense of himself. Well, and right. the and the the Trayvon Martin case, you know, that was a political hack. Yeah, and he was the prosecutor was told not to even go after that by the police. Mm -hmm. And you know, he was. What was his name? I can't think. Yeah. Um. He was, you know, George Zimmerman. George, George Zimmerman, Zimmerman was tried in a, He was tried in a court of law. He was acquitted in a court of law. Yeah. And if if we can continue to use somebody who has been found innocent by a jury of their peers, and I'm going to say it right now, O.J. Simpson killed his wife. Yeah. And everybody needs to believe that a hundred percent. Right. And we need to start trashing him for it because he's. Doing, doing it whatever he wants. Yeah. So we need to just start slamming him everywhere again. Yeah. For it. Yeah. They, they won't let this one die. The, no. You're right. The man was exonerated more than well enough. Like he, he's still millions of dollars in debt. Yeah. To be exonerated for something well, there, that he, the police told the prosecutor. Moved, he moved and he's got a local <laughs> prosecutor after him for something yeah. stupid. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Zimmerman. Zimmerman. Oh, he yeah. moved and he's got well, having all kinds He had of another shooting. There was yeah. a guy that was pissed off about Trayvon Martin in Texas, and the dude tried to get in his car in Texas and, and knife him to death, I guess, if I remember yeah. correctly. I, somebody's yeah. going to have to go look this up. But um, if I remember correctly, the dude tried to get in his car and he ended up shooting a second guy. And the dude can't get a job. He lives with, like, bouncers around the family and stuff like that. Yeah. All because of this this political hack that decided was told by police not to go after it, told by the governor not to go after it, told by her peers in the law uh, or the lawyers community, the bar association not to go after it because it was a clear cut case. Like they had evidence, they had video, they had this, they had that, and we're still going to drag this through the mud yep. and use it like it was some kind of mistake or some kind of crime committed. Because the guy had a right to defend himself. And the thing about stand your ground in the Trayvon Martin case is it had nothing to do with the case. Right. Nothing to do. George Zimmerman couldn't get away from Trayvon Martin. He was trying to stomp him into the concrete curb. Yep. Yeah. <coughs> yep. So these people are ridiculous. So and he negated his ability to try and retreat. Exactly. So... Um, DeWine said last year he supports Stand Your Ground. Hopefully he will sign the stupid thing. and uh, But ask the legislature to set it aside following the mass shooting in Dayton, which has got nothing to do with Stand Your Ground. Nothing. The, the dude opened fire in a, in a crowd. Like, uh, what's that got to do with Stand Your Ground? Yeah. Nothing. It, it, it's a... It's a it's a Joe Biden statement. Yeah, like well, how much money's in a checking account? Goats are brown. I mean, yeah. and in the Dayton shooting, had somebody been in the crowd and <laughs> wheeled around and popped the guy? That's a mass shooter situation. You know, a mass shooter situation. Stand your ground, wouldn't it? Wouldn't have affected that either way if an armed citizen went at ah, nope, not today, buddy. Bop. Exactly. Well, but actually, this next thing, would, this stand your ground would uh, kind of apply here. I don't know if anybody saw this video, but uh, <clears throat> they, they uh, and I think this was in the Indianapolis, area. right? And if you watch this video, we're not going to watch the video, but I, everybody should go watch this video who's watching tonight. The, the truck pulls up, and these people are spread out all over the road. It didn't even look like a protest. This dude pulls the, pulls around the corner, and these there's two of these numb nuts. <coughs> they pull their firearms out. Now, thankfully, they got them at low ready. But then the guy backs up, and he tries to go around him. And they chase him across the street. So then he backs up, turns around, and goes the other way. <coughs> so this this is is flagrant 
aggression right there. Yeah. Flagrant aggression. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, I can't say I'd have dropped this numb nuts. I'd have probably backed up just like this guy did. But if he raised a gun, I'd have probably dropped him through the window. Um, yeah. And there's two of them. There's another. You can see his foot sticking out behind this other dude right here. Um, the other guy's got a gun pointed at him too. And it's it's utterly ridiculous. You, I get you can protest, but to pull a gun on a guy who's trying to drive down that street, that's you people need to grow up. This is this has gone far beyond the patience level of the average citizen in the United States. It's and, not protesting. And no, pulling a firearm on a guy who's just trying to use a public street, which he paid for, yeah. is not protesting. It's not. It's not even a statement other than you're an idiot. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. This guy's an idiot. I hope he sees this video. He calls me on the phone. I'll call him an idiot. If I knew who he was, I'd drive out to Indianapolis and tell him he's an idiot. So if, you, if you're in this situation, back up. Just back up quickly. It's the easiest way to get rid of that. So, um, yeah, this... I want to put this up there so everybody can go watch the video. We did have a, uh, a shooting in Canton Township um, Wednesday night. A uh, man was shot at a skill games parlor in a former church building in the 2400 block of Waynesburg Drive Southeast. Where? Waynesburg Drive is... That's 43. 43. Yeah. Um, that is... Would Waco. Be, yeah, that would be over in Waco. That's in Waco. Yep, I think I actually know where that is. <clears throat> um, Stark County Sheriff's Office said man was transported out in hospital and is in stable condition. Stan said the person who fired the shots left the scene by the time the sheriff's deputies arrived. Well, thank you, Captain Obvious. I, I mean, come on. The sheriff detectives are pursuing leads and still trying to determine what happened have yet to make an arrest. Stance, who declined to release further details about the shooting, said the skills game establishment, which was not permitted to operate, has closed. <laughs> Oops. Uh -oh. uh, sheriff's deputies arrested a 32-year-old Canton woman around 1.30 a.m. Thursday while they were carrying out their investigation at a nearby gas station on Williamsburg Drive. She was there to pick up someone, Stance said. But so far, deputies have not found any indication she's linked to the shooting. The woman who the deputies encountered during their investigation, Stan said, was arrested because she was wanted on nine <laughs> felony warrants, including charges of drug possession, drug possession, and drug tampering. That's kind of nine warrants? Oops. <laughs> I mean, come on. Really? You're going to hang around a skill games place with nine warrants? Yeah. An um, illegal skill games place. An illegal skill games place with, with gunfire. And I got nine. To, you just got get nine out of more. Dodge when the gunfire starts, man. Yeah, no the cops are going to be like ten minutes behind the gunfire, always yeah. guaranteed. So this one's this one's rather concerning. Uh, an Air Force helicopter was shot at and forced to land. Yeah, one pilot was. Um, yep. So. The first part of this article is kind of garbage. U.S. Air Force helicopter was shot at while flying over Virginia and was forced to make an emergency landing, McCla McClatchy is reporting. While the event is being initially revealed on Wednesday, the event occurred on Monday, according to military officials. Crew member who was not identified was injured and was treated at the hospital. So they actually hit the thing. FBI dispatched special agents and its evidence response team to the Manassas airport after receiving reports that a helicopter was shot at from the ground nearby. The FBI Washington field office is working jointly with our law enforcement partners, including the Air Force Office of Special Investigations, to determine the circumstances surrounding the incident. Um, one individual sustained non-threatening, non-life-threatening injuries, injuries. He was treated and subsequently released. Um, officials at Manassas Regional Airport told McClatchy they received a call around 12.20 p.m. alerting them of the emergency landing. Uh, Joint Base Andrews said in a statement the Office of Special Investigations is fully engaged with their FBI colleagues on this incident. 
Um, to be fair, it may have been a simple case of negligence. Maybe someone hit the helicopter because they were shooting up a hill and didn't have an appropriate backstop. Maybe someone was just shooting in the air and didn't realize the aircraft was even there. That would be a shooting in the air. one wild. That's like getting struck by lightning. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I doubt it. Some nun nuts decide to take a pot shot at an army helicopter. I guarantee. That's well, they said it a little further. It was a UH one Huey. It was a yeah. Huey, and they said that looks looks like a police helicopter. Yeah, it does. Yeah. They do look like police helicopters, and let's hope that people are not resorting to that. I mean. I would imagine, imagine do when the military you goes, okay, fine, fucking we're, missile. We're going to load ordnance. You're cleared hot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, bro, it's been. Right. Actually, with a 20-mil gun on the Well, it here. says it right, right here. Uh, it doesn't make it any better, of course. It just means their target identification skills suck. I yeah. mean, even a UH-1 Huey has got a big white star on the side of it. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean... It's just, I mean, generally, big letters, U.S. Air Force, U.S. Army, U.S. Marine, whoever's flying it, it got right. their logo all over it. Generally, in most circumstances, it's not a very good idea to shoot at the U.S. military. It doesn't matter the branch. No. Generally, they take offense to that and more than likely will shoot back. That's kind of why we pay them, right? Yeah. So, I mean... It's just kind of a dumb. Yeah, I'd quit that shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Quit. You're liable to swallow a 9 mil or a 20 millimeter. I know, right? He's a big old. Yeah, like a 20 mil chain gun. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what happened. It just went off. That's that hillside. Well, it just went off. Yeah. <laughs> so, finally, some good news out of the state of California. California. The Ninth Circuit ends California's ban on high capacity magazines. Fine. Right? This was today. Today. Three Dutch panel of the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals on Friday threw out California's <coughs> ban on high capacity ammunition magazines, saying the law violates the U.S. Constitution's protection of the right to keep and bear arms. Even well intentioned laws must pass constitutional muster. Appellate Judge Kenneth Lee wrote for the panel's majority. California's ban on magazines holding more than 10 bullets strikes to the core of the Second Amendment, the right to armed self-defense. He noted that California passed the law in the wake of heart-wrenching and highly publicized mass shootings, but said that it isn't enough to justify a ban whose scope is so sweeping that half of all magazines in America are now unlawful to own in California. He is right. California Attorney General Xavier Becerra's office said it was reviewing the decision and he remains committed to using every tool possible to defend California's gun safety laws and keep our communities safe. In other words, we're going to translate this. He doesn't like it. and He's going to spend Californians' tax dollars by the pile to go after this again. <clears throat> gun owners cannot immediately rush to buy high-capacity magazines because they stay issued by the lower court judge remains in place. How does a stay issued by the lower court judge remain in place? Um, Bukera did not say if the state would seek a further delay of Friday's ruling to prevent an immediate buying spree if the lower court judge ends that restriction. Gun groups estimated that more than a million high capacity ammunition magazines may have legally flooded into California during a one-week window before the judge stayed his ruling three yeah, years ago. A, they have a specific... I was trying to look it up, but I, the only thing I could find was all the, all the stuff from today. But they have a... Like, the Californians have a name for it. Yeah. Like, they wait around and, like, mark the day on... Like, days on their calendar. Like, they pay attention to it when it, they'll get one judge that issues a stay and it opens it up and, like, gun dealers already got, like... Oh, like, they, like, they got, a, like, thousands of them just... Stuck in the back room, or they got them in a warehouse in friggin' Nevada. They go up to go up at like midnight, boom, drive them back, and just people are in there like 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 it was in March, like lines out the door. Wow. People are just buying. Them. <laughs> Maybe we ought to run some high capacity magazines out to California here pretty yeah. quick. Um, Bakura also did not say if he would ask a larger 11-judge appellate panel to reconsider the ruling by the three judges or if he would appeal to the U.S. Supreme Court. 
Gavin Newsom, who championed the magazine ban when he was lieutenant governor, defended the law as a vital gun violence prevention measure. Garbage. I think it was sound. I think it was right. And the overwhelming majority of Californians agreed when they supported a ballot initiative that we put forth. Uh, I call bullshit on that. California Rifle and Pistol Association attorney Chuck Michael called Friday's decision a huge victory for gun owners. And the right to choose and own a firearm to defend your family. While well, a group that favors firearms restrictions called it dangerous and expects it will be overturned. The ruling has national implications because other states have similar restrictions, though it immediately applies only to western states under the appeals court jurisdiction. That would hit Colorado, too, with their 15. And New York? No, no western, it's western states because it's oh, Ninth Circuit. Right, right, right. Yeah. But, well, but look at Arizona. I mean... Just do whatever, do pretty much yeah. damn, damn near what you want in Arizona, and they, it, it's not dangerous. I don't, there. I don't think they let you in Arizona if you don't own a gun in a high yeah. capacity magazine. Do yeah. they? I don't I think don't. so. I think I don't think you're allowed. I like your credit card quits working as soon as you cross the border or something. Um, the decision written by an appellate judge appointed by President Donald Trump should put gun safety advocates across the country on high alert," said Giffords Law Center litigation director Hannah Shearer. Well, good for them. Um, Supreme Court majority in June declined to consider several challenges to federal. Um, aside from the magazine ban itself, Michael said the unaffiliated Second Amendment Foundation said the case has legal implications for other gun restrictions should it reach the justices because it could allow the court to clarify an obscure legal debate over what standard of review would be used. The Supreme Court seems inclined to do away with the complicated subjective test that many courts have wrongly applied to the Second Amendment cases in favor of a clearer, more objective, originalist approach that considers the text, history, and tradition of the law to determine what infringements might be tolerated. What they're talking about here is, if you look at and study court cases, they're talking about uh, scrutiny, uh, Intermediate scrutiny and strict scrutiny, which they apply to different cases, right? So under the strict scrutiny clause, it says that the, the government has got to have a very narrow um, implication for the law in which they passed. And it must be strictly scrutinized against constitutional muster. I don't know if I'm explaining that perfectly correct, but it works. Um, and most of these other more ungun friendly states have done this with intermediate scrutiny like the state has got a reason to do it so they're allowed to do it yeah well, the supreme court is going by generally if you don't have a good very very good reason to do it then you shouldn't be able yeah. to do it exactly um so hopefully and the thing is, this has been coming for a while. Friday's decision upholds a 2017 ruling by San Diego-based U.S. District Judge Roger Benitez, who blocked a new law that would have barred gun owners from possessing magazines, magazines holding more than 10 bullets. Um, so this has been going on for a while. Yeah. But he and the appeals court went further by declaring unconstitutional state law that had prohibited buying or selling such magazines since 2000. The law had... Let those who had the magazines before keep them, but bar new sales or imports. So uh, this was a lower court judge that started this. And I wish a lot more of these guys would would start this kind of review of these laws. And, well, it's, you know, the worst part about it is there's so many liberal judges out there that, that don't agree with that and and don't agree with the fact that <laughs> you should be able to defend yourself. Like they've been saying for years, you shouldn't have to defend yourself. Call the police. But then in the next breath, we're going to say, we're going to get people on the council, city council, or we're going to cut the funding for the police 50%. Yeah. yeah. But you can't okay. own a gun. But you can't own a gun to defend yourself. Yeah. No. You no. can't You can have more nope. six bullets in your magazine or something yeah. stupid like that. So yeah. it just... <clears throat> It's a, it's a nanny state type of thing. That's okay. You're just a sitting duck. There's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. yeah. Don't worry. We'll, we'll send you food stamps and all that. Right? So we're, we're over time. You want to do the product of the week? You want to? We are. 
Uh, about, yeah, we're actually, we're right on time. So, yeah. um, once again, guys, um, everybody out there, thanks for joining. Uh, tell a friend about our podcast and, uh, you know, go ahead and like and share if you can. Um, if you're still out there listening to us. Thanks for spending your Friday listening to us ramble on about some stuff that probably nobody outside of the concealed carry world cares about, but we like to do it anyway. So we're going to continue to do so. If you want a class, better sign up right away. Yes. Uh, classes are getting farther and farther out. Sheriff's departments are getting farther and farther behind. So um, if you want, if you want or need something, get it in as quick as possible. Uh, once again, guys, Thanks for spending this hour with us, and we will see you back here next week at the same time, and everybody enjoy their weekend.